Well, I never thought I would be saying this, but we just closed out the very best sales week for the entire year of 2023, right smack dab in the middle of July, right smack dab in the middle of what is usually summer slowdown. So that is great news for us. If you are interested in finding out how we accomplished that, check out the video that's in the description box below. I'll also link it up here somewhere and you can find out the details on what we did to increase our sales. But let's dive right into what actually sold this particular week, which is the week of July 16th through 22nd. But before we do that, let me introduce myself. If you're new here, I'm Wendy and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. So let's dive right in. The first thing we sold was a Mercari sale. This was one of the Victrola turntables. If you've watched any of our videos in the past, you know that we got these from a B-Stock liquidation palette that turned out to be a really bad buy. That palette was missing items. The um, condition of the items was not at all how they portrayed them to be. I don't know that all B-Stock liquidation palettes are like this, but the one that we got, which was from Costco, was horrible. <laughs> we have a video on that as well, which I'll link in the description box below and up here somewhere. You can check that out. We were very green when we made that video, so do not judge all of our videos off of the quality of that video, but the information in that video is definitely helpful. So this turntable we have had for an extremely long time. We still have lots of turntables. These turntables just are the last thing to move from that liquidation palette and they are stubborn. But I was so excited to get an offer on this one through Mercari. They offered us $236, which I immediately took. We had a cost of good of $47.18 on this item. So we still made profit on it, which was great. And we got rid of this huge item. It was in a really big box. So we were happy with all of that. Next up um, was an eBay sale. This one was a lot of six Chicago vinyl records. They were not in great condition. Some of them had like significant scratching, which affected the sound. Some of them had some warping, but we did have a large number of albums and one of them had the original poster inside of it with the original iron-on for a shirt and both of those items were in really good condition so that made this lot desirable for those reasons alone and then the condition of some of the records was not bad so we just disclosed everything in the description that lot eventually sold for a best offer of fifty dollars even we had paid a total of $17.50 for all of those records, and those came from an estate sale. Next up was a genuine Kate Spade hot pink and orange sunglasses hard case. It didn't have any glasses in it. It was just the hard case only, but it was branded Kate Spade. We got this at a rummage sale. We paid just 25 cents for it, and it sold really fast for $15.28. If you can get sunglass or glasses cases that are high-end brands like this, if you can get them for an inexpensive price, like 25 cents, probably worth picking up. This one sold super fast. And that sold on offer to buyer. Next up was another item we got from the same rummage sale. This came out of that big lot of photography and negative enlarging equipment that we purchased. This was an Acura Photography Negative Enlarging Focuser Scope. It had the original box in it, it was vintage. We got this for a dollar. We had paid like $50, I think, for everything that was included in that lot. And y'all, there was a lot. There, um, We have already made our money back and we still have so many items to sell. So that is gonna be probably one of the best purchases that we made this year. Um, but we broke down our cost per item at just $1, and this one sold very quickly for $17.98 on offer to buyer. Next up was another item from that same photography lot. This also sold quickly. This was called a Soligar 8x10 Black Double Drawer Store and Feed Paper Safe. So I guess you put photography paper into it, and then you can pull the drawers out, and it will, would pop the paper out for you so you didn't have to so that it would only pop out one piece of paper at a time, so you would only touch one piece of paper at a time. It was a really nice 
piece of equipment and still in really good condition. So like I said, we only paid a dollar for each of the items from that lot and this one sold for $45 even. Next up was a purchase that we got from, uh, it was a garage sale, we were kind of there late in the day and really the only thing left at this garage sale was a big box of toys and most of the toys in it we ended up donating or throwing them away depending on what they were. But there were a few little gems in there and the lady running the sale said you can have that whole box for a dollar. So we took that off her hands so she didn't have to get rid of it and did find some real gems in there. This was one of them. This was a 2019 Funko Pop set of two Simpsons Treehouse of Horror Kang and Kodos figures. They were loose out of the box. If you can find these in the box, they're worth a lot. But even loose out of the box in good condition, these sold for our full asking price immediately, like within a day or so. And that was $59.99. And we had broken down our cost per item at that of that box being at just 25 cents. So we didn't find much in that box, but the four items that we found, um, at, at, if this is the only thing we sell, it was still worth it. All right, next up was a Reader's Digest video called It's Branson, um, about Branson, Missouri. This was new and sealed. It was vintage from 1999. We got this at the thrift store. We paid 14 cents and it sold for our full asking price of $9.99. We actually still have another one of these to sell, so hope that one sells as well. Next up was a vintage 1985 Cabbage Patch Kids doll. This one was a girl doll. She had blonde hair and blue eyes and she had an original CPK yellow shirt. We got this from a seller who we bought a bunch of vintage Cabbage Patch dolls um, from. She had them listed on Facebook Marketplace. Our per doll cost was $4.44 and this doll sold for $29.18 on offer to buyer. Next up was seven replacement laser printer toner cartridges. We lotted them all together because they were all for the same printer. And those sold for $31.99. We had paid $3.19 for those um, when we had purchased from a toner store here locally that was liquidating a bunch of its stock and that's where we got that. Next up was a pair of No Boundaries Women's Leopard Print Canvas Slip-On Sneakers. These came out of a storage unit that we purchased. Our cost of goods on this unit was very low, just 28 cents. And these sneakers sold for $15.18 on Offer to Buyer. Next up was a Camelback Bottle Bite Valve and Straw for an Eddy Water Bottle. The package had been opened and one of the um, the valve and straw sets had been taken out, but this one was still left and it was unused, so we did include that information right in the title. And that item sold for $11.99, which was our full asking price. It sold super fast. We did get this at a garage sale where, um, unfortunately, we weren't wearing our cameras and we have major regret about that because we showed up at this garage sale and they were like, ready to get rid of everything and they still had so much good stuff left. It was like one o'clock in the afternoon and we were amazed at how much they had left. So I don't know if people could find them with their signs or maybe they got off to a late start and a lot of people didn't come or maybe they had their stuff overpriced in the morning. But anyway, when we showed up, they said, you can take these big kitchen sized trash bags and fill up as many as you want for $10 each. And so we just stuffed them full of, you know, whatever we thought would maybe sell, and this was one of the items. So our per cost, our per unit cost on each of the items from that sale was just 33 cents. So that was a really, really good deal. <laughs> Next up was another thing we got from that same sale, and this was called a Lazy One Adult Small Blue, Fee Blue Fleece Don't Moose With Me. <laughs> it was a one-piece winter-footed pajamas for adults. This sold for $19 even on best offer and we had paid just 33 cents for it. Next up was, the brand was called American Princess and this was a toddler size formal dress. It had, it was white and pink and it had flowers on it. We picked this up in the Goodwill bins. We paid 61 cents for it and it sold for $23.18 on offer to buyer. 
Next up was a women's faded glory shirt. It was new at the tags. It um, came from a purchase that I made on Facebook Marketplace where I had purchased a big bulk lot of plus size clothes, but then that ended up not being a good deal because a lot of the clothes I got were not plus size, so it was kind of a misrepresented lot. Um, and then this actually took a very long time to sell, but we discovered that the reason why is because it was missing like a lot of our pictures. So the list, something happened with our listing from when we originally put it up. But the uh, buyer reached out to me and asked for more pictures, and that's when we realized the pictures weren't included. We provided those, and she purchased it immediately, and we still made profit on that. So we had paid $4.17 for this shirt, and it sold for $14.38. We were really glad to get rid of it because it was just one of the stragglers left over from that bulk purchase. Next up was a bad buy, bad sale. This was a 1980s Sharp Carousel Microwave Oven Cookbook. And we had gotten this at a garage sale for a dollar. We sold it on best offer for $7.50. I think we actually lost money on this. We were just like, you know, let's get what we can out of it. So we did that. That was a mistake. We won't be buying anything like that again. Next up was a really good buy. This was 180 bevel shave system shaving razor blades and a new open box shaving brush. We got these at an estate sale. There was a big box of, sh of um, this bevel shave equipment and we separated them out into a bunch of different lots. We had paid $12 for all of the shaving items but we got like five lots of items out of it. And this is kind of a high-end mail order shave system. I'm not sure if they're still around, but anybody who's looking for these older styles, you know, they might be willing to pay up. So we had our cost of goods in our spreadsheet listed at just $3.25, and this set sold for $64.99. So definitely worth it on that. Next up was one of the Build-A-Bear workshop outfits. This came from a garage sale where we got tons of Build-A-Bear clothes. That was such a great sale. We've made lots of money on that. We paid a dollar for each of the Build-A-Bear outfits, and this one sold for $11.18 on offer to buyer. Next up was another item that came from that fill bag garage sale. This was a Vera Bradley Ziggy Xenia Black Floral Zip Around Wallet. It was in really good condition. We paid just 33 cents for it and it sold immediately for $13 even on best offer. Next up was a pair of women's hunting boots. They were camouflage, they were snake proof, they um, were waterproof, they had a lot of things going for them and they were brand new in the box. So we paid $40 for these and these sold immediately for $148.68 on offer to buyer. Next up was something else that was from that bevel purchase that we made. This was a three-pack bevel shave system of restoring balm, bottles of restoring balm. That we paid $3.25 for, and this lot sold for $37.99. So we're well in the profit on that purchase. Next up was a 2011 Bandai Thundercats action figure. We got this out of a thrift store toy bag. Our cost of goods was just 10 cents, and this action figure sold for $15.18. Next up was something we wouldn't normally pick up, but we were playing Ben's Bingo. Um, if you haven't seen our Ben's Bingo video, I will link that above and in the description box below. That's a super fun video, so go check that out. But on the bingo card was a healthcare item and we needed to fill up the card. So we picked this item up just to fill up our bingo card. This was a brand new sealed easy dose weekly four day med time pill planner. So it was a really large medicine caddy that um, would accommodate taking medicine four times a day. And we had paid $1.18 for it at the bins that day, and this one sold for $17.99. It did not sell very quickly, but we still made profit on it, so it ended up being worth picking up, although probably not an item I would pick up again. Next up was a phonics book set. It was called Step Into Reading. It was a Paw Patrol set. We paid a dollar for that at a garage sale, and this sold for our full asking price of $9.99. 
Next up was a lot of three men's Columbia PFG fishing shirts. Had a variety of different ones. We got all of these at a rummage sale and decided to lot them together because um, they sell better that way. They were all the same size. We paid 43 cents for these. This was also a fill a bag sale. This was fill a grocery bag of full of clothes for just two dollars. So that was a great deal as well. These sold really fast for our full asking price of $42.99. Next up was an original Kia Motors wheel lock set. But before we get to that, I'd like to take a moment and invite you to subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. We put out all kinds of content related to reselling and if that's a topic that you're interested in, make sure to hit that subscribe button with the notification bells turned on so you don't miss out on any of our content. And if you're enjoying this video, if you find anything helpful or informative about it, please hit that like button so we know that you enjoyed it. And if there's anybody that you know of that might benefit from this video, share it out to them. Well, thanks so much and let's move on to that Kia wheel lock set. We got this at an estate sale for $5. It was brand new in the packaging, unused. Um, authentic OEM car replacement parts, automotive parts can do really well. Even if they're used, sometimes they can do really well. So at a price of $5, I picked this up without even copying it <laughs> at an estate sale and it sold really fast for our full asking price of $36.99. Next up was a Nike Vapor 24-7 junior size football and it had the Nike logo on it. We also do really well with Nike sports balls. The junior sizes don't sell for as much. The regulation size balls sell for a lot more, but you can make a lot of money on sports balls if you can get them for the right price. We found this one at a garage sale for a dollar. It needed air. We aired it up. It held air really well and we sold it for our full asking price of $29.99 and it sold super fast. Next up was a lot of three Harry Potter four inch Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw banner Christmas ornaments. This came from the fill a kitchen trash bag garage sale. There was a bag of just various Christmas ornaments and these were in there. I picked that bag up specifically for the Harry Potter ornaments but there were other ornaments in there as well that we may eventually sell but these sold super fast. Our cost of goods on these was just 33 cents and these sold immediately for our full asking price of $12.99. Next up was a pair of men's extra extra large mossy oak camo pants. They were new with the tags. We found these at a thrift store. We paid $5.86 for these and these sold on offer to buyer for $21.58. Next up was a book. It was called Interfact Reference Solar System. And it was from 1997. It had a CD-ROM that went along with it and then a paperback book. We got this book from a curb alert. Someone had put a bunch of stuff on the curb and then just put on the next door app. This stuff is available, come get it. And we were the first ones there. Most of the stuff that we got from this curb alert were space related books. And we've sold a lot of them. We still have a few left, but we've sold almost everything we picked up at that curb alert. So curb alerts can sometimes be a real gold mine because you don't have any cost involved and you can find good stuff. This book was not like, you know, high value or anything like that, but we had no cost of goods and it did eventually sell for our full asking price of $9.99. So there was still profit there. Next up was another one of the Victrola turntables. This also sold on Mercari. We got an offer on this one for $144. This one was new, but it had a tiny little piece missing that was so minor. It was just like a little rubber bumper that went on the lid of the turntable so that when you set the lid down, that rubber bumper would protect that plastic from hitting the rest of the um, equipment. So one of those rubber bumpers was missing. We disclosed that. This one, we also had a cost of goods of $47.18 and it sold for a best offer of $144. Next up was a vintage 1995 Walt Disney's Winnie the Pooh sing-along cassette tape. 
We tested it and it worked. We got this out of a thrift store for 26 cents and it sold for our full asking price of $11.99. Unfortunately, the buyer contacted me and stated that the item had not arrived. When I checked the tracking, it said that they had provided an incomplete address and that the item was being rerouted back to me. Um, media mail, sometimes you'll get the item back and sometimes it just gets lost forever. And if you do get the item back, it does take a really long time. So I did respond to them and say, you know, let me, let's wait and see um, a little while longer what happens with it see if we get it back and then if you want to repurchase it and update your address you can do that. But after about a week and a half and really no movement being made on the tracking and I ultimately just responded to them and said it doesn't look like we're going to be getting it back anytime soon. It may just be lost in the mail forever so I'm going to go ahead and refund you. And I did that. Um, I could have opted to deduct the cost of shipping to refund them but the little bit that it would have been to me was just not worth the risk of dealing with negative feedback and going through all of the hubbub that it takes to get rid of it. So I just refunded them the full amount and said, let's just not worry about it. Let's just move on, be done with this. Next up was a pen and gear, five inch all over video game controller, mini back mini backpack with a clip. This was just something that you can clip onto your backpack or purse, just kind of a little, you know, decoration. It did zip open and would store something. Maybe you could put some little erasers or, you know, personal items in there. It did, would not hold very much. But we got this out of a storage unit. We list everything we find in a storage unit that is clean or in good condition because we want to recoup as much of our cost as possible and get as many as much earnings as possible. This particular storage unit we have recouped all of our costs which was originally only $75 but um, you know something like this you just never know if it's gonna sell fast or slow. It This one took a few months to sell but it did sell here right before school so that was perfect and we got our full asking price of $12.99 on that. Since our cost of goods was only 28 cents we still have good profit on that item. Next up was a lot of three Maisto 1998-1999 and 2008 die-cast Tonka vehicles. We got these at a garage sale for just 25 cents for all of them and we sold them on best offer for $17. We did get a response back from the buyer saying these are not die-cast, which wasn't true. They were all die-cast. I looked at the pictures again just to make sure they some of them did have plastic parts on them but the major, the main part of the vehicle on every single one of them was die cast so I offered for her to send them back then I didn't hear back from her and then we ultimately got positive feedback which I thought was odd maybe she was just fishing for a partial refund realized she wasn't going to get it from me but we were pleased to get the positive feedback. Next up was a My Little Pony Pinkie Pie Snap-On Fashion Pony that um, had different parts that you could take um, on and off, dress the pony up in, you know, all kinds of different fashion stuff. We got this when we were doing retail arbitrage, which is something we are not good at. This one, I don't even, we got this so long ago, it had to have been more than two years ago. We got this so long ago that I don't even know what our cost of goods was because at the time we did not have this in our spreadsheet for some reason. But this sold for eventually $11.18 and we were just wanting to get rid of it at this point. Next up was a vintage 1977 Fisher Price dollhouse, like a living room globe or a study, something, uh, something you would put in this dollhouse study, a globe. This was actually something that I purchased a long time ago for my daughter's dollhouse. So I don't know what our cost was, but we she doesn't use her dollhouse anymore. She's a teenager. And we sold that for a offer to buyer of $12.68. Next up was a WeSing VHS. WeSing sells really fast. If you ever find it, it sells almost as fast as like a Barney video does. We have really good results from selling WeSing. This one I think did not have a sleeve or a case. It was just the VHS only so it didn't sell for much but it did sell super fast. We got this at a thrift store for just 13 cents and it sold on best offer for eight dollars. 
Next up was a lot of two video games called The Elder Scrolls, 4 and 5, Oblivion and Skyrim. These belonged to my husband. He played them and didn't need them anymore. And they sold for our full asking price of $14.99. Next up was another item we got from that photography set lot that we purchased at that rummage sale. This was called an RK's Flipper Photo Processing Electric Print Dryer. This sold for $45 even on best offer and we had paid just a dollar for it. Next up was another item from that photography lot. This was a really random item, but something about this, it was just so vintage looking, I knew this was gonna sell. This was a Mizell, I think is how you would pronounce that, Sandy and Monty Zucker short course and candid wedding photography. It was a box set, it had negatives in there, it had little wallet size photos, and then it had a, I think it was on cassette maybe, it had a cassette course that you could listen to teaching you about how to do wedding photography, and then also a book. We paid a dollar for that at that rummage sale, and this sold very quickly for an offer to buyer of $23.98. Next up was an item that we got from that fill a kitchen trash bag garage sale. This one's going to blow your mind that this was still there. This was a Nikon Coolpix white waterproof optical digital camera. We tested it and it worked. We paid just 34 cents for this at that sale and this camera sold immediately for a best offer of $75. So you cannot count out going to a garage sale late in the day. You never know what you're going to find. Most of the time, you know, they're pretty picked over, but we really made a killing at this sale. Next up was another Build-A-Bear item that we got at that Build-A-Bear garage sale. This was a two-piece blue gingham floral dress with bow. We paid a dollar for this and it sold for our full asking price of $24.99. Next up was a women's career pencil skirt. This, the brand was Laura Scott and it was a size 10 olive straight knee length skirt. We were gifted this from a family member to sell, so we had no cost, and it sold for $14.38 on offer to buyer. Next up was a Loungefly Hello Kitty wallet that we found in the bins. Loungefly is a great brand to pick up. Those are, sell those are really hot right now. You can find the backpacks, the wallets, anything Loungefly that you find, if you can get it for the right price, worth picking up. It's just selling really well right now. We paid a dollar and three cents for this at the Goodwill Bins, and we sold this for our full asking price of $29.99. We did sell it for a little bit less than some of the other ones listed because ours had a little um, green mark stain on the back of it, which we just closed. Next up was another Nikon Coolpix camera that we got from that same kitchen trash bag fill a bag sale, and this one was almost just as valuable. This one was a Coolpix Red LCD digital camera. This one was not waterproof, so it wasn't worth quite as much, but it still sold for $49 even on best offer, and we had paid just 34 cents for that. Last up, I will go over all of the collectible cards that sold from my husband's personal collection. This week, we sold several high-value cards, meaning cards valued at $10 or more. And so I'll go over those first, and then I'll go over the low value cards. The high value cards that we sold, the first one was a Magic the Gathering Arabian Nights card. This one was called City in a Bottle. This one sold on auction for a total cost of $356. It ended up going through the eBay Authenticity Guarantee Program and passed with no issues and went on to the customer. Next up was a Magic the Gathering Unlimited card called Soul Ring. We have sold several Soul Rings in the past and we still have several more to sell. This card usually sells for around $75 to $125. This time it sold on auction for $96.04. Next up was a Magic the Gathering Mirage card. This one was called Phyrexian Dreadnought. And that card sold on auction for $76 even. Last was a Magic the Gathering Unlimited card called Sinkhole. We also have multiple Sinkholes. These usually sell for around $20 to $25.
This one sold on Offer to Buyer for $19.98. And next, I'm going to go over the low-value cards. This week, we sold three low-value cards for a total dollar amount of $14.58. That wraps up all of our sales for the week of July 16th through 22nd, so let's go over all of the totals now. Like I said, this was our very best week of 2023 to date. I mean, we still have fourth quarter, but to date, this was our very best week of 2023 and here we are in the middle of summer. I would have never thought that this would have happened now. But we had a total of 50 sales. Our average sale price was $42.12. We had a total dollar amount of sales of $2,105.92. And our net profit was $1,235.57. So if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you may know that I have a personal goal of getting to the point where we are making a net profit every week of at least $1,000. Normally, we don't make that goal, but this week we exceeded it. I'm so excited about that. And sales have been doing really well. So I cannot wait to see what fourth quarter is going to bring. Let me know how your sales are doing in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite item was that we sold. And let me know where you think we got the best deal. Was it the photography deal that we got, the negative equipment? Was it the fill bag sale that was the fill bag clothing sale at the rummage sale? Or was it the fill a kitchen trash bag garage sale? Based on the sales in this video, which one do you think was the best purchase? All right, well, thanks so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let us and let YouTube know that you enjoyed it by hitting that thumbs up button. That really helps us out. And it also helps us out if you will hit that subscribe button with the notification bell turned on. If you think there's anybody who might also enjoy this video, we would really appreciate it if you would share it out. Check out the links that we have in the description box below, and we will catch you guys on the flip side. Bye.